Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, where you never quite know what you're going to get on here. You'll get a fair bit of theology and spiritual guidance, which I need more than anyone else, but I put it there for my own good as well as anyone else that wants to look at it. Photography, bird watching. I had a wonderful day the other day when I discovered a, uh, or bird photography, I discovered the Australasian bittern which I'd never seen before in the wild. Was that a local duck pond when I was out doing a photo walk for some exercise while we're in, in quarantine with the, um, the, the virus going around the world at the moment? And um, I was just so excited to see this little bittern sitting out in full daylight. Normally they're mainly partly nocturnal and they live in the reeds and very elusive and you never see them, a member of the heron family. Uh, you'll be able to, if you go to my blog, you'll be able to see some photos on Jeff Thompson's blog dot blogspot dot com, you'll see some uh, pictures or a picture of of that um, bittern. Anyway, that's not what I'm going to be talking about today. Friday flashbacks, I might call this, and you might get some more of this. I have a huge collection of photo magazines, and uh, I really can't find anyone that wants to buy them off of me these days. I've asked and I've sold some to a chap in the state at one stage. But before the internet came in and be how did you learn photography? You learned it by doing it and by talking to other photographers, maybe doing some courses, maybe watching some videos. But I used to buy two or three magazines just about weekly and uh, I have a huge collection going back. Well, some, this one here, this one was about, uh, when was that? 2006 this one's 2010 2003 but I have them going all the way back to the 60s and the 50s some of the magazines I have some of the older ones and so it's it's a wonderful resource to find out what cameras were around what people were saying back then seeing uh, I've transitioned through shooting film to digital and uh, seeing people saying that uh, film's gone forever and then it's bouncing back and so on and so forth and uh, it's just a wonderful time to be into photography because we do have so much choice. So I just thought I'd share a couple of things from maybe this one first. This is a, a camera magazine, an Australian camera magazine. And just two of the things they were talking about on here, uh, if you can look at that, there was the... Um, they were talking about Fujifilm's 3D Marvel. Will this camera change the world? And then they had the little um, Pentax I... Dash 10, which was a digital version of the original 110 cartridge Pentax SLR system. And I've wanted one of these little uh, cameras, that little one there in the middle, for years. I know a friend who has one, but if he ever sells it, I'll jump on it. But uh, um, they're such a beautiful little camera, 12 megapixels. They take okay photos, they do video, but they are just so cute and so tiny. You can wear them on a necklace around your neck if you want to. And uh, so one day I'll probably get myself one of those. But there's a review about that. It only just been released in here, a full scale review in here of that camera. And also this uh, Fujifilm 3D Marvel. Will this camera change the world? Well, I don't think it did actually. Um, let's see what page that was on, see what they say about it. It's an interesting article. On page 36, on trial. So they did a full review of this thing. If anyone's got one out there and they want to email me, I could probably send you a, a photocopy of this. Okay, almost there. Double vision. The concept of a stereo camera is almost as old as photography itself, but a 3D digital compact with 3D image processing and a 3D monitor screen is something out of the box. Report by Paul Burrows who has been an editor for many years of some of the Australian photography magazines. And uh, it goes on, very comprehensive review of the whole camera. And then it gives you a, a sample of some of the other variations of different types of stereo cameras in the past, or 3D cameras in the past. There's one there in the middle, this one uh, here, which is a... Um, an Image Tech Marvel, the 5 lens 3DS-EXP645 recorded 5 in images onto 220 length roll film and the plan was to make extra large 3D lenticular prints. 
I'd never heard of it until I read this magazine, and I think there wouldn't be too many of them around. And then there's this amazing, amazing concoction here of this um, double-looking Yashica there, with two cameras built in side by side. Anyway, what did they say about this camera as a verdict in the end? The verdict. There's nothing else like the fine picks real 3D W1 at the moment, so it is pretty pointless to compare it with a conventional digital compact beyond its ergonomics and operation, which could definitely be improved, and its suite of features, which is a bit rudimentary in places. However, in terms of what it's meant to be, an accessible and easy to use 3D camera with digital era conveniences, the W1 is a beauty. It's quite easy to forgive the quirkiness because the 3D images are definitely out there and extremely addictive. So yes, it's very early days and this is an undoubtedly version 1, but the W1 is guaranteed a place in camera design history and the price they were selling it for back then was 899 Australian dollars. There you go. And all sorts of uh, the vital statistics listed there. And the, uh, the Pentax Optio 110, which is what I was telling you about earlier. What did they say about that? Just bear with me. What page was that? 66, that was. And once again, they really went into a very full-on review of this camera. You can see it there, uh, the review. A couple of pages. The verdict. <coughs> This was selling for 349 Australian dollars. And when did I say this magazine was out? This was um, 2010. So that's 10 years ago. Okay, so the verdict. Don't get the idea from the last paragraph that we didn't like the Optio 110. Far from it. It's a superb little camera that stands out from a very big pack of Me Too designs by virtue of its distinctive styling and some handy features such as the built-in filter effects. I love the built-in filter effects on the Pentax Digital SLRs, which I love playing around with. The nod to a very quirky little piece of Pentax history possibly won't mean much if you weren't involved in photography 30 years or so ago. I was always going to get one of those original little film ones with the 110 cartridges. But if Olympus can successfully invoke the spirit of the original Pen F, which when you think about it shares pretty much the same design f philosophy as the Auto 110, in a contemporary digital camera, then the Optio 1-10, or I-10, is equally valid as a contemporary reinterpretation. In the end, though, it is by giving this camera some real character, as well as some handy additional capabilities, that Pentax has ensured it will appeal to real photographers. You don't see many of them around these days. I've sourced some of them on, on the internet, eBay and Gumtree and all that sort of stuff. I've nearly got close to buying one, but I haven't. I'm keeping my eyes open, and eventually I'll probably get one. So the Professional Photographer's Equipment Directory, I've got many of these that have come out each year. This is put out by the magazine called Pro Photo, and uh, it gives you great listings of all the different cameras. Directory for digital SLRs, digital studio cameras, professional 35mm cameras, medium format, studio flash, Printers, uh, promotions from various places, survival of the fittest. Some of the cameras mentioned in here. The Pentax Ist D was just coming out then, which I do have one. I bought the original one and I still have it and I love it. It's one of my favourite cameras of all time and uh, it still works. Only takes six megapixels, but the quality is really good. And in fact, it is a um, digital version of the last top-of-the-range Pentax 35mm camera called the MZS, which I have and I used to use for weddings. And so that's why I had my eye on this one when it came out, because I knew it was going to be very similar to the MZS. And it is in some ways, but it's not in other ways. Okay, so what else have we got here? We've got the uh, Kodak DCS720X. The camera platform, this is, this is, listen to the spe specifications of this one. <coughs> Excuse me, the, the camera platform is the Nikon F5, lens mount Nikon F, F bayonet. 
<coughs> sends a type CCD 15.5 by 22.8 millimeters. Number of pixels, 2 megapixels. Focal length conversion factor, 1.6. Conversion, AD conversion, 12 bit per RGB color. Storage medium, PC card and type 1 dash 2 dash 3 dual slots IBM micro 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 drive maximum camera file size 6 megabytes in a TIFF and ISO range 400 to 4000 expandable to 6400 buffer memory up to 25 frames systems requirements Windows 98 SE 2000 MENT and Mac OS 9.04 onwards who remembers Mac OS 9 I do I still have it here somewhere uh, features retains all Nikon F5 autofocusing, metering and exposure control facilities with calibrated through the lens auto flash 4.5 centimeter LCD monitor and microphones. Uh, IEEE 1394 connection video output PAL slash NTSC. The price Australian price for this. Bear in mind this was a two megapixel camera. I think that's what. What it says number of pixels two million that's two megapixels i think price ten thousand five hundred and fifty one dollars for the body only that's back in 2010. did you buy one do you have one do you want to sell one there you go and there's lots of other interesting cameras on here as well sigma had the sd9 which was a new um camera digital slr that they were raving about the interesting thing about that was that from what I can gather, it only took raw images, with the idea being that um, you then, in the processing that came with the camera, the um, image processing uh, computer program, you could actually change them and tweak them afterwards. The idea was that if they just captured it in raw and you didn't capture it in JPEGs and everything, there was less things that you had to worry about. Interesting theory, isn't it? So that camera was selling for five thousand three hundred and ninety nine Australian dollars with a twenty four to seventy millimeter lens, and that was ten point two megapixels. There you go. Well, I could go on, and maybe I'll do that on Friday flashbacks next time, uh, because I've got heaps of magazines and the cameras. If if you in fact if you write into me and say have you got a review on such and such a camera? It's just a good chance that I've got it in some of these magazines. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's been a little bit longer than what I normally rave on about. 12 minutes, 13 minutes by the looks of things. So thanks for watching and uh, just keep letting your fingers do the walking around my blogs and around my video channel. You never know what you're going to find. So thanks for coming. Have a good weekend and stay safe. Don't catch the virus.